So, here we are at Golden Bridge Pottery. Established in 1971 by Deborah Smith and Ray Meeker. On the Coromandel coast of South India, they have brought in stoneware ceramics into a hinterland that is basically known for only terracotta. I first reached Golden Bridge Pottery as an architect from Bombay 24 years ago to be a student of clay. But this Pondicherry, this ashram, this studio, Ray and Deborah, all this became a new home for me. I was in the ceramics department in 1969. I had just dropped out of architecture school after four years and was finishing a degree in ceramics. And that's where Deborah and I met. Deborah was going to go to Japan with Susan as an interpreter because she had a degree in, in Japanese language from Stanford. And so she was going to go to, you, to uh, Japan with Susan to be her interpreter for the book that Susan was writing on Hamada Shoji. Hamada Shoji is the ashram's starting point. In 1910. Sri Aurobindo passed away in 1950, but the ashram has become a famed Pondicherry institution. The mother took over from Sri Aurobindo later and uh, offered a piece of land to Deborah to start the ceramic studio. Ray and Deborah came up with the name Golden Bridge Pottery based on the text of Sri Aurobindo's Savitri. So uh, at the time, I remember thinking that, gee, if I could manage to uh, live through one year of Pondicherry weather, South Indian weather, uh, I might never leave. There was a, that piece of land, it was about a quarter of an acre, a third of an acre, covered with thorn bush. And the mother said, do it here. It's a lucky spot. We started with a 10 by 20 foot palm leaf shed. And it, it very soon became clear to me that Deborah was never going to be able to make pots in that shed. So I started a, a larger structure of about 600 square feet. And uh, in fact, it was, wasn't until a year later that the kill was finally built. So it took us a while to get going for one reason or another. We had an exhibition at that, the Ashram Exhibition Hall. Immediately, people started coming that wanted to learn. So we had Kabul, Bulu, and then Anga. Anga turn up. Uh, the Golden Bridge Pottery was the first workshop to make uh, handmade glazed stoneware in South India. Now there are more than 16 small units in uh, the Pondicherry, Oroville area. In, uh, in fact, Pondicherry has become a, a Pondicherry pottery has become a generic term. Angad Bora, who apprenticed, apprenticed with us from 1976 to 1979, began uh, the mantra pottery in Oroville. Around the end of 75, I must have started working at Golden Bridge. And I moved to Oroville in 79 and picked up a place that somebody had tried to start a pottery in Kotakrai. And that was called Kotakrai Pottery. And there for about 10 years, 
I did salt glaze pottery, single fired salt glaze pottery without a pyrometer and wood fired and it was great fun, very challenging and during this time I met Patrick Adamson. Angad and Michelle were one of the first to learn ceramics at Golden Bridge Pottery. Subsequently, they got together and started Shilpika Pottery in Oroville, where they started to train locals from the villages around. Here are some of them, 30 years later, in their own studios, with the next generation already taking over today. I completed my pottery course in Government of India, Minister of Textile and Handicrafts, 1980. Then I was jointed in Golden Bridge Pottery, 1991. Then I started my own unit in 1992. I am Shankar. I am in Alangupa. I am doing in Terracotta Pottery. I am learning studio pottery in flame pottery in Auroville. 15 years I am working there. After I start the terracotta work, 2003 to uh, 2022. My name is Gopal. He is my son, Tamil Vendan. There are six years, I think, they are working and joined the Michel Shilpika Patri, Angat and Michel. That time I also, they are working. Then coming Angat Mantra Patri starting. There I working 25, more than 25 years. Then I starting my house, small pottery. My name is Vijay Bhubadi. In Sanju Nagar, I am the Surya Tagota Handicraft. It's a plus ceramic. I am working the Michelle eight years. I am make the Sanju Nagar pottery so 20 years. It's a first son. It's a Surya. It's a working here. Always hand or also. My name is Krishna Murthy. I am from Kotakara village. 1990, uh, Angad and Michelle starting Shilpika. I am working together. Then uh, 1995, Chinmay Anamika starting Mandala Pottery. I am the Mandala Pottery manager. I am doing uh, glazing, firing, slab work. Then I have a small studio in my house also. So my children are helping too. So in the early 90s, Chinmay, who was studying ceramics with Michelle next door, at Shilpika, started Mandala Pottery with Anamika, a Dutch national, and Krishnamurti, who was also learning there, joined Mandala. I came in from Golden Bridge Pottery after three years of being a student there, and that's how we started this studio. Afsane had a copy of Nader Khalili's book, Racing Alone, where he talks about the concept of fire building and how he basically fathered the concept of fire, firing houses. So, you know, I told Nader, you know, I'm gonna go back and do this. Uh, we made a very, you know, a two meter wide, three meter high vault on two meter walls in the pottery compound. That was the first fired house. So Druva and Monica were partners in Oroville and, and they wanted a mud house. So they came to me and said, we want you to build us a mud house. I said, well, if you're asking me, I'm gonna build you a fired mud house. And so they said, yo, okay, that's all right. So that's how that came up. I got a note from Prochima, uh, just an outrageous note. She said, when in the hell are you coming over and building my temple? She had the dance school at Nitrogram. So I went over and looked at it, and we took a walk, and there were brick fields all around, and so it was a no-brainer.
as we leave behind the crazy traffic of Pondicherry and head north on the East Coast Road, we are approaching the International Township of Oroville that was founded in the late 60s. Oroville has the highest concentration of ceramic studios in India due to its close proximity to Golden Bridge Pottery. This is my studio, Forest Pottery. I graduated from Golden Bridge Pottery in 1992. I do Hayu slipwear, a technique I picked up in Japan. I also do sculptural work and architectural work. My studio ceramic work is very different from the traditional functional ceramics that we do at Mandala. With my background as an architect, I have a different way of looking at things and uh, that shows through in the murals and the installations that I do. This is my studio, Avartan Pottery. I studied painting from MS University, Baroda. That's where I got my first initiation with clay and sensibilities in clay from my teacher, Jyotsna Bhatt. Eventually came here to Golden Bridge Pottery to do glaze making workshop with Susan Peterson. In 2005, I joined Golden Bridge Pottery as an assistant teacher to Ray Maker. To be around a ray maker who was already making large sculptures at that point. My fellow potter friend Adil, both of us decided to have uh, someone who is a soda expert to come and give us a workshop, give us some knowledge about soda and we decided to invite Ruta and Tedball from UK. We had a wonderful three-week workshop with her. When a layman thinks of making a pot, he probably thinks of the wheel. That is only about 10% of the work, but it certainly can be dramatic. Nineteen ninety-six onwards, Ray and Deborah started hosting international artists for workshops at Golden Bridge Pottery. It's a very small part of the culture and sometimes it seems like you know there are not enough people who want to encourage it. And when I see what Deborah and Ray have done here, um, I think it's amazing really that they've um, built up what they've done um, and made a success of it and it's a beautiful place. Let me now quickly take you through some of the works of some of the ex-students and some assistant teachers of Ray's who over the years have made a name for themselves in the world of clay.
So we are back at Golden Bridge Pottery now, and uh, Arti Manik, who came here in 2014 as a student, is now Ray's assistant teacher and working with students and overlooking some of the production work that's going on. 2017 is when I, when Ray and Debbie asked me to come and help them with teaching. Since the lockdown, we have had an increase in the number of uh, students coming in for the seven-month course as well as the short courses. As far as the production goes, the old staff trained by Ray and Debbie uh, who worked at Golden Bridge for over 35 years have retired and we have started taking and training a new crop of locals into the ways of Golden Bridge pottery. And to me, I'm very proud, and I think Ray and Deborah must be even more proud that, that there are so many people making a very decent living, and I think more than that, having a decent lifestyle, having a decent way of life, because pottery makes you quite humble, no matter who you are. <laughs> the problems and challenges of glazes not working, clay bodies going wrong, firings going wrong, all that makes you very quiet and respectful to the materials you're working with. Four years ago, Debbie retired from actively running the production work at the studio. She is currently penning her memoirs. Ray still keeps working on his monumental sculptures. That swan song exhibition of his is thankfully nowhere in sight. Golden Bridge, our Golden Bridge, it's in a state of flux. We need to just wait and watch and see what tomorrow brings. <laughs> 